Hello, how are you doing? It's another great day that uh, the Lord has made. And today, i like to speak about uh, the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of heaven. There's been a lot of confusion. You see, in the Bible, you see some places, Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven. Other places, the kingdom of God. Apostles are saying this kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. You're really wondering now, are these two different kingdoms or is it one kingdom? And if it's two different kingdoms, then what's, what's the difference? So today I like to dissect this in detail so that you can be able to understand the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God and what it entails and when and where shall it be, all right? So that now we can be able to end this confusion. So these are two different things. Two different things, two different kingdoms. Just the same way you can see the names. Kingdom of God and Kingdom of Heaven. They have different names. Those are different names and they mean two different things. All right? That's something that you need to understand. Because according to 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible tells us, Study to show thyself approved. Uh, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you have to divide the word of truth so that you can be able to understand and say, this is one thing, this is another thing. Because the Bible, the whole of the Bible is not written to us. It is written for us to learn, but not to us. There's specific times that God has spoken to us because you see, the whole Bible has things we call dispensations. We, there is a time of Adam, the time of Moses, the time of Abraham, the time of Noah, the time of uh, Jesus, the time of... And the, it will go all the way to the time of the tribulation. We don't live in the time of Moses. We don't live in the time of Noah. That we can say, okay, God gave instructions that somebody to build an ark and then you go now and start building an ark. No, that's not our message. But it is for us to learn something. So, likewise... We have dispensation, and unless you rightly divide the word of truth, you'll always get confused, all right? So now, the word kingdom of God, kingdom of God, shows up about 70 times in the King James Version. 70 times in the King James Version. And also, the word kingdom of heaven shows about 33 times in the King James Bible. So now, having understood that, we already see there's one which is spoken more, and there's another which is spoken a little bit less. Is there something that we are trying to understand here? So now, one thing I like to tell you is uh, we have to understand these kingdoms. And I don't know if I'm... Uh, let me just draw this. We have something here. This one is... Uh, I'll draw how uh, we have the time of the law. This is the time of the law. Then we have also, this is uh, Jesus' ministry up until somewhere here. All right. This is Jesus' ministry until his death. And then we have the time of grace. All right. This is the time of grace. Or we call it the church age. And then we have the rapture, which happens around here. And then we have, uh, this is the time of the tribulation, uh, tribulation. And then we have uh, the second coming, which is called the Armageddon, all right? Armageddon, all right? This is the rapture, all right? Then after that, we see we have also the millennial kingdom. All right, this is a thousand years. Now, having seen this, we first already have to understand where are we? We are right here. We are right here, just before the church is raptured, just right there. That's exactly where we are. So having understood where we are, we are able to know this one is the Old Testament. This one is the New Testament testament all right so now all this through from the time of adam and then we see the law of moses jesus ministry grace and all that we see various things which are which pertains to the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven all right we will be able to see where is the kingdom of heaven and where uh, do we see the kingdom of god and this is very important for us to see that so now paul 
Apostle Paul defines the kingdom of God. He gives us a definition. What exactly is the kingdom of God? So that's what I'm going to start with. In Romans 14, 17, the Apostle Paul says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So what does he mean saying meat and drink? Meat and drink is something that you can see. It's something that you can touch. You can touch some meat. You can touch some drinks. It's something that you can see with your literal eyes. But he says it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So already we are seeing, he's saying that kingdom of God is righteousness, uh, righteousness, uh, righteousness, sorry for my wrong spellings, it's righteousness, then peace and joy, and all this is in the Holy Ghost, all right? So that is what Paul has defined to us, okay? So having defined to us this, we already first get a clue that the kingdom of God is, is, uh, is nothing that you can be able to see or touch. So you can touch righteousness or peace or joy, but it's something that you can, it's, it's, it's in the Holy Ghost, all right? So let's see also another definition. In Luke 17, 20 to 21, the Bible says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. You see, Jesus also is confirming. He's saying, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. It's not something that you can see and say, okay, that is the kingdom of God coming. No. Or that is where the kingdom of God is. It's not something that you can observe. Verse 21 says, Neither shall they say, Lo, there, or lo, there. Uh, law here or law there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So Jesus also confirms, he says, the kingdom of God is also within you. So now, now already we have two great definitions. That the kingdom of God is within you, is inside you, all right? It's within the hearts of men. So how do you join the kingdom of God? How do you join the kingdom of God? Jesus tells us how we can join this kingdom of God. He says in John 3, 3, he says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. All right. So you have to be born again. So that you can be able to see the kingdom of God. That's very, very important. Let's see also verse 5 of the same chapter. Chapter 3 of John. It says, And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So you can't enter into the kingdom of God unless you're born of water and spirit. How is to be born of water? When a woman gives birth, we always say that once the water breaks, that's the moment that birth has taken place. If the child is not, uh, uh, I don't know how to explain, but immediately the water breaks. That is what science says and all everybody knows about that. Once the water breaks, that's the beginning of life. And also, when you're born of the Spirit, that's the moment you enter into the kingdom of God. All right? And verse 6 says, that, is which, is born, that which is born of flesh is flesh. So if you're born of water or flesh, it's flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and where it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Just like the wind, you can't tell where the wind is going. But you will see the fruits of the wind, all right? You will see it um, 
carrying uh, you know carrying things carrying papers or this side or maybe carrying dust in another side so you will see the results of the wind but you cannot see wind and say the wind is blowing like this i can see the wind blowing or going no you will only see the results the same way with the kingdom of god you cannot see you cannot see with your naked eyes this is the kingdom of god but you will see the results in the people who are in the kingdom of god how they live how they do their things the way they are lovable they have joy they have peace they are, they have righteousness they are different people they are changed people they're not just like any other person because they are in the kingdom of god which is holy ghosts of the holy ghost and is within you so if the kingdom of god involves the holy spirit in people then it means it must have started at the time of grace all right when one cannot lose the holy ghost so you see before you could be able to lose the holy ghost you remember um david when he sinned with belsheba he was telling god please and don't take away your holy spirit away from me don't take away because the holy spirit could come and he could live but now in the time of grace when jesus revealed the grace grace has always been there i've taught that before grace has always been there but it was not revealed People never knew because Abraham found grace, Noah found grace and all that. But it was scanty, scanty. Many people did not realize that there was grace. Okay. Even in the time of the law, there was grace. Just go and check my other video uh, concerning the grace of God. All right. So now when you see all this, it means that when Jesus came in his ministry, he started revealing the time of grace. And when he started revealing the time of grace, now people started understanding now that the Holy Ghost can live within you. He can be within you. And then if the Holy Ghost is within you, then you can be able to enter into the kingdom of God. So how do we receive the Holy Ghost right now? How do we receive the Holy Ghost? Do you receive the Holy Ghost the same way people used to receive the Holy Ghost before? No. Right now, we don't receive the Holy Ghost by being baptized in water. We don't receive the Holy Ghost by, uh, what do I say? Not by being baptized in water, not by anything that you do. You see, before, you remember when um, Peter was saying, in Peter's ministry, he was saying that, Repent and be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is in uh, Acts 2.38. But right now, is it the same way that you receive the Holy Spirit? That after you repent, you, you must be baptized in water? No. Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Right now we know that immediately you believe you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So you receive the Holy Spirit by believing. The moment you believe, you receive and get, uh, you receive or you get the Holy Spirit and get automatically included in the kingdom of God. So when Jesus dies and rises again, from the book of Acts, that is uh, immediately, you see, in Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke, all those, I consider them still part of the Old Testament. Why? Because the testator, Jesus Christ, had not died. All right? We know that a testament, according to the book of Hebrews, says, a testament is affected by the death of the testator. And unless the testator dies, literally dies, then uh, the testament is still undone all right so we see in matthew matthew mark john and luke these are still part of the old testament all right why because the testator jesus had not died but immediately he dies we see jesus is speaking something else he's speaking about the kingdom of god just i, I, I will show you later what he was speaking about the kingdom of heaven later on but let me show you we no longer hear about the kingdom of heaven, but rather now the kingdom of God. When Jesus literally dies, when he raises up and then he meets the apostles. Now when he's speaking to them after being rose again. Now we see him speaking about the kingdom of God. Meaning Jesus had come to establish the kingdom of heaven. He had come to establish this kingdom of heaven for the Jews as their Messiah, but also 
he was also establishing another spiritual kingdom, which is called the kingdom of uh, heaven, which is for all the believers, for all the believers. Let's see what Jesus says when he rose up. In Acts 1.3, Jesus says, To whom also he showed himself. Okay, this, this, uh, not, uh, th- this is actually the Bible saying. Eh? To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible Proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He spoke concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Let's see, Acts 8.12. But when they believed, Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Have you realized something that from the book of Acts all the way, There is no place, one single place, where the Bible mentions the kingdom of heaven. Every other place is mentioned the kingdom of God. Why? There must be a reason. There must be a reason. And we are going to see this reason in just a little while. Let's see. Acts 14.22. All through, is talking about the kingdom of God. Confirming the souls of the disciples and, and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. It's still being spoken about the kingdom of God. All right? All right? Let's continue. Even we see Paul. Paul's gospel is all about the kingdom of God. All is preaching. All is preaching. There is no place where he mentions the kingdom of heaven. Could this be just a coincidence? Let's see. In Acts 20, 24 to 25, it says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord to testify the gospel of the grace of God. All right. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching, the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Paul is saying, I've been preaching about the kingdom of God, the message of grace and the kingdom of God. And I know once I go, you will not see me anymore. So the kingdom of God all ties to the church age. And this is what Paul always preached. He always talked about the kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God. So when we see this, we must be concerned and say there must be something which we are being told. There is a big difference between kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven. We see already the kingdom of God is all about the Holy Ghost. It is a spiritual kingdom. It is within you. All right. You enter into the kingdom of God through being born again. All right. In Acts 28:23, let's see somewhere else. 28:23, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging. People are coming to the lodging where Paul was uh, was uh, taking a rest. He was sleeping there. Listen what it says. Huh? To whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening, preaching the kingdom of God, verse 31. Let's go to verse 31. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Paul is speaking kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God. There must be something different about the two kingdoms there must be a big difference so what is the kingdom of god it is spiritual just like i've told you it is a spiritual kingdom it is not meat and drink it is not something that you can see it is not something you can say that's the kingdom of god no it is something which is within you so what does it entail in detail what does it entail we know we have had it entails righteousness peace and joy is there anything else that we can associate with the kingdom of god with the things of the Holy Ghost, because it's of the Holy Ghost. Let's see. In Galatians 5, to 25, it says, Galatians 5, to 25, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. 
And they that are child uh, Christ's have crucified the flesh with their fleck, affections and lusts. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So you hear, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. So now when you hear that, does that seem to be what exactly a believer today has? They are always... They are always peaceful. They are long-suffering. They have love. They have joy. They have gentleness. They have goodness. They have faith. You see, it is a spiritual kingdom. So the moment you're saved right now, you enter into this kingdom of God. You become a part of the kingdom of God. All right? So having understood that, we need to understand, how can you be included in this kingdom? How can you be able to say, I am included in this kingdom? How? By believing the gospel. You have to believe the gospel, all right? When you believe the gospel, you get saved. And what is the gospel? What is the gospel? I always like to bring it up somewhere, all right? The gospel. Maybe there are several people who have never heard the gospel, and this can be their chance, can be their chance to hear and even get saved, all right? So the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And I can read for you so that you can be able to know how can you join this kingdom of God. It says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. This is the gospel. I'm declaring to you the gospel. Which I, uh, which I preached unto you, so you must hear the gospel preached. Which also you have received, you must receive the gospel. And wherein you stand, you have to stand in the gospel. This is where I am standing. I'm not standing on my goodness. I'm not standing on my works. I'm not standing on anything I did. I'm standing on the gospel. By which also you are saved. Nothing else saves you but this gospel. All right? If you keep in memory, it has to be here. God says, I've written my laws in you. All right? If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Believing in vain is believing like the Pharisees. They knew all the scripture, but it was only just in their minds. It was never in their hearts. They never believed it. You know, when you have something just in your mind and you have not digested it and it has come to your heart, then you're still not a believer. You're only carrying your, the Bible in your head, but you don't believe in it, all right? There's a big difference between believing God and believing in God. Believing in God, you just believe that, yeah, there is a God. I believe, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I believe in, in a God, I believe. But then do you believe God yourself, all right? You definitely have to do that. Verse, uh, verse 3 says, For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received. So Paul is saying, I'm giving you something which I've already received personally. It's not my own. How that Christ died. How did Jesus die? How? He shed his blood. This is how. This is how Jesus died. He shed his blood. His very precious blood he shed for us. If there could be no this blood, if Jesus could have died out of heart attack or could have died by drowning, there could never have been blood and there could never have been salvation. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So it's very important to know how Christ died. All right, How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So you have to understand several things. How that Christ died, Jesus died for our sins. How that Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So you have to understand those five folds. Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again according to the scriptures. When you believe that, you are saved and you get included in the kingdom of God. And when the rapture happens, you are not going to miss. The kingdom will be within you. You'll have the Holy Ghost and you will be saved. All right. Having understood that, having understood that, let's see. The kingdom of God applies to both Jews and Gentiles. This kingdom applies to both Jews and Gentiles. But the kingdom of heaven is specifically for the Jews only. I know many will debate on that. But I'm going to prove it to you. It is only for the Jews. And uh, 
It is for the Jews because the kingdom of heaven, it was to be set up at this time. Remember when Jesus came in his ministry, he was preaching the message of the kingdom. He was preaching about the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven. He was there. This is who your forefathers prophesied will rule the nation of Israel. But then what did they do? They rejected Jesus. They said, no, we don't want to hear your stories. And after they rejected Jesus, what happened? That was it. That was it. All right. So Jesus was killed. And after he was killed, the kingdom of heaven was postponed to this time. All right. So here is where we have the kingdom of heaven. It was postponed to the time of the millennial time. All right. So the kingdom of heaven was here. Kingdom. The kingdom of heaven was here. But now we see here we have the kingdom of God. All right. And then this kingdom of heaven will come up again here. Let me just write in full, full words. Dome of heaven. I want to show you this clear, 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 clear difference so that you can be able to understand. Right now, we get into the kingdom of God. But later on, the kingdom of heaven will come. And guess who will be ruling? It is Jesus. He'll be ruling from Jerusalem. He'll be ruling from Jerusalem. Jerusalem actually means Jehovah uh, rules Salem. All right? Remember, uh, I, I don't want to get into details. Remember the Melchizedek. Melchizedek in the, in the early times, the time of Abraham, who was given a tithe by Abraham. He was the king of Salem, who was the king of peace. All right. Why would Abraham give someone tithe? And that time there were no children of Levite. There was no Levites and the law had not been established. That is the person. And Jesus is on the order, is under the order of Melchizedek. So he is the one, the Salem, the one who ruled Salem back then. He's the one who is going to come here. And he's the king who is going to rule the nation of Israel. All right. And everybody will have to bear with that and we'll have to agree with that. So Jesus says, right now, let us focus on the kingdom of God. Jesus tells people, no, don't worry about this other kingdom. Let's focus about the kingdom of God first. All right. Let's focus on that. The other kingdoms will come later on. Let's see. In Matthew 6, 33, Jesus says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He's saying, seek first the kingdom of God. First, make sure that you're saved. All right. And then the other kingdom and the other things later on will be added unto you. So when he says seek first, it means there's something else which will come second. If I tell you, let's go to the mall first. It means we go to the mall and then something else I'm going to show you. All right. It means seek the kingdom of God first and then the second kingdom will come later on, all right? That one is a clear indication that there is a second kingdom. But first, we have to seek this kingdom. Let's be saved first. And then this one will come up later, all right? So the kingdom of heaven will be a physical kingdom. Kingdom of heaven is a physical kingdom. It is something that you can see when Jesus will rule on earth from Jerusalem, all right? In Matthew 10, Matthew 10, uh, 5 to 7, it says... These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the, Galilee, uh, the Gentiles, and not in any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lordship of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now listen to that. Jesus is saying, he's telling the disciples, Go, but don't enter anywhere where there is a Gentile. So if you're a Gentile, the message of the kingdom of heaven is not for you. Don't enter anywhere. Don't even speak to the Samaritans. Don't tell them about the kingdom of heaven because it's not theirs. Jesus was there and then ready to set up the kingdom of heaven. He was to rule the Jews as prophesied before, but the Jews did not accept him. And hence, this kingdom was postponed after the church age. There has to be the church age and then the kingdom will come back later on. Are you getting the point? And also we see John the Baptist preaching about the same kingdom of heaven. John the Baptist. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven. 
We have to understand this. What was, what exactly was he saying, John the Baptist? Remember, where did John the Baptist preach? Just before Jesus came up, uh, just around here, all right, is where we see John the Baptist coming up. Hmm? Just before Jesus starts his ministry, John was around here. This is John. John the Baptist. And then Jesus starts his ministry and then he dies and then something else starts. All right. So what was John the Baptist saying? In Matthew 3, 1 to 2, it says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was saying, there's a certain guy who is coming here. So you guys repent. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is about to start because Jesus is already in place. The same way we say right now, the way things are moving on, I can literally say that the Antichrist is just somewhere, somewhere just being groomed to start taking over. He's alive and, and kicking, waiting to start the time of the tribulation because according to how things are like, I don't see the world going so many other years, all right? So you can say the same way here, John, was saying, hey guys, already Jesus, the one who is supposed to come and take over and start the kingdom of heaven, is already here. So re repent, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Almost all the Old Testament prophets were talking one thing. They were all preaching about the message of the kingdom of heaven. So Israel was waiting for a literal king to rule them, to rule Israel. The Israelites were waiting for a literal king, a king who will come and kick out the Romans and kick out every other person and establish himself and become the king of the Israelites, as prophesied in the, in the, in the scrolls. And even this one is ex explained very well when, uh, when Jesus was entering Jerusalem. And then they started putting on twigs and leaves and all that and the palms and all that. And they said, is talking about the king of Israel. Let, let's see that verse. Let's see what it says. In John 12, 12 to 13, it says, On the de next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. See, these people are saying, they already know, wow, it's like the king of Israel is about to show up. This is the king of Israel. Hosanna. Let's see also what Mark says. Mark, uh, Mark uh, 11, 9 to 10. Let's also see another angle of it. Huh? It says, and they that went before and that followed cried saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Why were they saying, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord? Blessed is that king. Blessed is the kingdom. They were talking about the kingdom of heaven. But they did not accept him. The leaders of, the, of, of Israel, the Jews, they never accepted him. And then the kingdom was sent ahead. All right. So Jesus preached about the kingdom of heaven that he wanted to establish. So he was all about the message of the kingdom. That's why it's very important to understand this. And if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you'll end up believing in a very different gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. You'll be talking about this kingdom of heaven instead of talking about your, the, this kingdom of God. All right? It's very important to differentiate the two. If you don't differentiate the two, you'll end up doing something which is not of your dispensation. And then you'll be left behind because you've never entered the kingdom of God. And that will be it. And then now you'll have to wait all the time until the time of the tribulation. You have to be here. And then now the message of this kingdom, that is the time that now it will be preached. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm clear about this. Let me, let me show you what Jesus was preaching. In Matthew 4.17, the Bible says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 5, 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is talking in the Beatitudes. He's saying, repent. Uh, I mean, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. Here. Matthew 5, 10. 
It says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He knew around this time of tribulation there will be a lot of persecution. Yes, today we have persecution, but it's not as much. You can survive without anyone ever lifting a finger on you just because you're a Christian. But this time, it will be so difficult for you to be a Christian. But then he said, blessed are you who will be persecuted this time. Because the kingdom of heaven will be yours. Matthew 5.19, it says, Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments. Listen, Jesus is talking about keeping the commandments. Listen, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, see something here. Why is Jesus telling people to keep the law? Keep the commandments? Are we supposed to keep the commandments today? No. Paul tells us very well, you are not under the law, you are under the grace. The law is a curse. Forget about the law. Follow Jesus here. Follow Jesus what he did for you. Forget the law. The Bible tells us Christ is the end of the law for all who believe. Now, if it's the end of the law, then why are you following the law? Why is Jesus talking about the law? It's because he's talking about this kingdom. He's not talking about the kingdom of God. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven. And that's why we are seeing two different messages, two different kingdoms being spoken by Jesus. Matthew 5.20, it says, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. He's telling the Jews, unless you behave, you're not like these Pharisees and scribes, you will not enter in this kingdom of heaven. He's not talking about the kingdom of God. Those are two different things. They are totally two different things. So Jesus says the old saints or the dead people, several people who he mentions, will sit, will sit with people from all across the world in the kingdom of heaven. He mentions Let's hear what he says. Matthew 8, 11, Jesus says, And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and from the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. You shall sit with Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac in the kingdom of heaven. Now, let me ask you. The Bible right now says you should not speak to the dead. How will you be able to sit with these people if it is not in a literal kingdom. This we are told is a spiritual kingdom. It is now, it is within you. So do you think Abraham and Jacob and Isaac will sit with you in spiritual way? No, people will come from all nations. He's not saying even those people will be in Israel, no. He's saying they will come from all corners of the earth and they will sit with them in that kingdom. So it means it is a literal place where Uh, They will sit with them, all right? So why were the two kingdoms split anyway? Why did Jesus split the two kingdoms? He split the two kingdoms when these people, the Israelites, decided we are not going to listen 100%. We don't want you as our Messiah. We don't want God. We don't want the Holy Spirit. We don't want this. That's when... It was, uh, it was uh, split into two. Let's, let's see. Matthew 23, 13. Jesus says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourself, neither suffer them that are entering to go in. The Pharisees being leaders rejected Jesus. They said, no, Jesus, we don't want your stories. And these Pharisees are the same, like the same way we're seeing uh, today's uh, leaders in different churches today. They, they, they reject the message of grace. They say, no, we don't want to hear the message of grace. We want people to keep the commandments so that we can always keep on making sure that it is for our advantage. Their God is their belly. When you see somebody trying to make you keep the commandments, for example, they're always telling you, you must tithe, you must tithe, you must give, you must do this and that. Is that a message of grace? No. Tithing is a message of the law. They want you to keep the law because their God is their belly. When they are full, they say, "Ah, yeah, God will do a great thing unto you. No. It is a great thing unto them, to their belly. 
So these people behave like the Pharisees. And when you see a pastor who is not agreeing with the message of grace, run away from that person. Don't let them condemn you and keep you and keep you in the law. And then you keep on thinking, I have to do this to gain salvation. There is nothing you can do except what Jesus did. Jesus did all the work. All you need to do is just believe. Believe in this and then you're saved. Keeping the law will not take you anywhere. These Pharisee, modern Pharisees are only leading you to hell with their condemnations. All right? So when the Pharisees back then, being leaders, rejected Jesus, denying him from starting the kingdom of heaven, now the kingdom of heaven had to be postponed. And now God, Jesus, set up another kingdom which is called the kingdom of God, which is spiritual, first people to get saved. So which are the three times? Let's see the three times that uh, the Pharisees rejected. Remember, the Pharisees are the, uh, were the leaders, the church leaders, the leaders of Israelites, literally very respected people. So when the leaders come together, it's like here in the nation of Kenya, we see all the church leaders come together and they say, no, from today, Kenya will be an Islamic nation. These are the leaders. The other people can only just but follow. You know, these are the people who have made the rules. Like the way we had those uh, 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 leaders going to discuss about different things on different issues this, here and there. All that, well, that we do is just sit back and relax and hear what has come out from them. So they rejected God three times. Let's see. They rejected God the Father through uh, John's ministry. Remember, John was sent by God the Father. He was told, go and preach, tell people to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Did they listen to John? Did they? Or what did they do? They were always, you know, they're always going there when John is baptizing and then they're like, mm-hmm. So you're baptizing, eh? Uh -huh. Who gave you this authority? And they even told that to Jesus. Jesus. Jesus explains actually what they did, how they rejected John. Listen what he says. In Matthew 21, 23, Jesus, uh, this is Jesus uh, talking about this whole aspect of how they rejected John. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority? Doeth thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? These are the, the hypocrite Pharisees. Verse 24, And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. Jesus telling those Pharisees. Then he tells them, The baptism of John, whence was it? Where did it come from? From heaven or from men? And they reasoned with themselves and saying, uh, if, we, if we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, why did you not believe him? Mm -hmm. uh, verse 26, but if we shall say of men, we fear the people of, or, or, because all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, mm, we cannot tell, we can't tell. And and he said, that is Jesus, and he said unto them, Neither I tell you by what authority I do these things. So in short, Jesus explaining and telling them, You guys, you rejected John the Baptist. He told you about the kingdom of heaven. You said, no, we don't want that message. And God the Father had sent him to tell you about that. And you rejected. So we see the first strike, the first time that these people rejected the message of God. They rejected the kingdom of heaven. First strike, they rejected God the Father. Second strike, they rejected God the Son. Jesus, they rejected Jesus, the Pharisees. Let's see what happened. In Mark 15, 11 to 14, we see, but the chief priest moved the people. Moving the people is like, hey, go in. Hey. You, you know, like you're moving people, like the people doing campaigns. Hey, hey, all those kind of things. Like you're moving the people. Eh? Yeah? But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barnabas unto them. He's like, T tell, tell Pilate to, to release Barnabas, not Jesus. Tell, you know, he's moving the people. That, that's what the Pharisees were doing. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then 
that I shall do unto him whom we call the king of the Jews. So Pilate is asking, what do you want me to do to this who you are saying is the king of the Jews? Verse 13, and they cried out again, crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, why, what evil has he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, crucify him. They are saying, no, crucify this guy, crucify him, crucify him. Because they were moved by the Pharisees. And what did they do? They crucified Jesus. They denied, they rejected God the Son. That is the Pharisees. They rejected, and the nation of Israel as, as, as a whole, they rejected and killed him. Strike two. Let's see the third strike. Them rejecting the Holy Ghost. You know, Jesus has died. After he has died, now there is the early apostles preaching. And we see one guy called Stephen. When Stephen was preaching, he went... He went, uh, and as he was preaching, he went uh, to, to, to talk to the Pharisees. He told them different things, and he told them the history of how they came from Egypt and went and did this and this and that, and how God really worked uh, great things uh, for Israel. And then these people never wanted to hear the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Listen what happens in Acts 7.51. Listen this. Very funny one. <laughs> Acts 7.51. It says... Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart. This is Stephen's talking. In heart and ears. Why do you always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did? So be ye. So he's saying, you are hypocrites. You're always rejecting the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, you have rejected him. And what happened? They went and stoned Stephen. And you remember when they were stoning Stephen, what happened? When they were stoning Stephen... Stephen looked up and he saw heaven open and Christ standing. I think that was the last time that Jesus is standing and is like, okay, are they accepting I come back or something? That's the only time that we hear Christ stood in heaven. No, we know that Christ is always seated at the right hand of God. He's seated because he has finished all the work. Why was he standing? That was the final strike. Do they want me to come? But then they rejected and said, we don't want. And they killed Stephen. And told him, go away, we don't want to hear what the Holy Spirit says. That was three strikes. They rejected the Pharisees in the nation of Israel in full. They rejected God. So now, immediately after that, what happens? After that, the message went to the Gentiles. And the kingdom of heaven was postponed. Now the message immediately started going to the Gentiles. Now, as we see very well, Stephen was was turned around here in around chapter 7, all right? Chapter 7 of Acts. And then we see in chapter 8 of Acts, we see the Ethiopian eunuch. All right? We see the Ethiopian eunuch, who is a Gentile, getting saved. Now, God has changed the message. Now, it's no longer the kingdom of heaven. But now, since you have rejected the third strike... Then now let's move the message to the Gentiles. Now the Ethiopian eunuch gets saved in chapter 8. Then also we see Paul getting saved in uh, chapter 9. Paul gets saved in chapter 9. And as you see, we see now transitioning to the Gentiles. All right. Now it's all about the Gentiles. All right. We see the message now is all to the Gentiles. Gentiles, Gentiles. And the whole story about the kingdom of heaven is mute from that time. We don't see it mentioned again. Now we see the kingdom of, of God being mentioned, all right? So the Bible tells us right now that our apostle is Paul right now. Our apostle is Paul. We don't need to uh, follow these other uh, ministries. The ministry of the early apostles, the ministry of Peter, the ministry of Jesus was to the kingdom of heaven. No, the ministry of John was kingdom of heaven. Now we are told that our ministry is a ministry of Paul. So Paul is our Paul is our apostle. That is according to Romans 11, 13. Is our apostle, all right? Is our apostle. Let me read for you. For I speak unto you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. I am the apostle. He's not saying I am an apostle. I am the apostle of the Gentiles. So we should follow Paul and what he teaches all through Rome, uh, Romans 
through Philemon. All right. So this is our message today. If you want to be saved, that is how you can be saved. And that's why the gospel, the gospel was revealed to Paul, the gospel of our salvation right now. Okay. So Paul told Jews, they rejected God. And now the message had turned to the Gentiles. We see this one being spoken by Paul. He says, you rejected, the, uh, you rejected God. And now the message has already turned to the Gentiles. Let's see. In Acts 13, 46, it says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turned to the Gentiles. It's telling them, You guys, you decided that? Then we turned to the Gentiles. Paul started preaching the gospel of God to the Gentiles fully, 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 fully to the Gentiles. Let's see, Romans 15, 16, it says, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ, that is Paul saying, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. You see now the message has fully gone to the Gentiles until the fullness of the Gentiles. And then now the kingdom of heaven will come later. Now we have to follow the kingdom of God. We have to be in the kingdom of God. We have to be saved. But remember one thing. There are those people who always say that, you see, God is done with Israel. Israel rejected Jesus and that was it. It's, he's done with them. No, God is not done with Israel. God is not done with Israel. Actually, God says, one day, everyone in Israel will be saved. They are just blind right now. And if you're a Jew watching this, this, you should understand that you are really blind right now. You may not agree, but one day you will agree, all right? That they have been blind for the sake of the Gentiles. If they, have, they could not have been blind, then the Gentiles could never have gotten salvation. But they are blind for our sake. So as you argue, as you say all bad things about the Jews, remember, they are the apple of God's eye. And that one you have to know that one day every Jew will be saved, okay? Israel as a nation right now is not saved, but individuals can be saved, individuals, because in this time of the gospel of grace, uh, in Christ there is no Gentile or Jew, so some Jews will be saved as well uh, uh, together with the Gentiles. But later on, God will focus after the rapture happens, Jesus is going to focus on the Jews. This is the time that we are going to know now. Jews are the apple of God's eye. You are going to know that time. Because he will focus 100% on them. Let's see what Jesus says about the Jews. In Romans 11, 25 to 28, it says, For I will not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. This is Paul saying this. Don't be ignorant of this mystery. Lest you should be wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part is happened to Israel. Until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. They are now blind a little bit. For a while. Until all the Gentiles can be saved. If possible. Verse 26. And so shall, and so all Israel shall be saved. Every person in Israel shall be saved. As it is written. They are come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. And as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the father's sake. So God has, is not done with Israel. It will come a time that everyone in Israel will be saved. Right now, we're just seeing this happening because the gospel, the kingdom of God has to be affected right now. People have to be saved. But later on, the kingdom of heaven will be established when Jesus will rule in the throne of his father David in Jerusalem. And he'll be the king of the Jews. He'll be the king of kings and lord of lords and, and everything here during the kingdom of heaven. So that's, that's the main difference about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. I hope you've been able to understand, get well the facts, so that there's no more confusion about which is the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, and all those kind of confusion. If you rightly divide the word of truth, you will be able to understand these things. I hope this message has been a blessing to you. I've also done another video for the people who will miss the rapture, please, if you'll miss the rapture, go back to my videos. Just go and check the video uh, I've, I've, I've uh, done about 
what to do in case you miss the rapture. Because not many people will, many people are still complaining. No, 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 you know, I can't be saved like this. I have to follow this. I have to follow what Jesus was teaching. They are following the, the old kingdom, which is the kingdom of heaven, which has already been postponed. And at the end of the day, you'll be left behind. So if you're left behind, it is going to be very difficult. Believe right now in the gospel. Believe right now in this. And your life will now be the same again. Thank you very much. You can share the video so that others can also get to know and learn. God bless you.